Okay, I'm going to talk about the two different types of memory, and I'm going to give some examples of each of them. So first of all, down here I've written the definition of learning versus the definition of memory because sometimes they can get a little bit intertwined and confused. So learning is the acquisition of a new skill, of new knowledge or skills. So learning is the actual um, acquisition, the process of, of learning or, or gaining these new knowledges, new skills, and, and learning new things. So when you're studying, that is learning. The actual retention of these learned uh, skills and knowledge is what the memory is. So the two different types of memory are declarative and non-declarative. Declarative memory is a memory of facts and events, and it can be split into two different uh, categories here. So first one would be um, episodic memory. So episodic memory is memory for autobiographical, uh, autobiographical life experiences. So something like, um, I remember going to the beach when I was six years old, or Florida Beach, or, or Daytona Beach when I was six years old, or I remember going to Paris, or I remember uh, playing my first time skating, or, or your first kiss, like those are all episodic memories. So we'll put first kiss here. And then the second type is called semantic, which is memory for facts. So this would be something like the capital city of a country. Um, or the name of your dog that died 10 years ago, whatever it may be. So names, facts. Then we have non-declarative memories, which fall into several categories. The first category would be procedural memory. So we'll do this right here. Procedural. So procedural memory is uh, skills and habits, and it's usually associated with the striatum in your brain. So this would be like playing the piano. Um, riding a bike. Then we have uh, skeletal musculature, so uh, like something that the cerebellum remembers, so coordination. So we'll just put skeletal muscles. This would be associated with cerebellum. coordination. So remembering kind of like how to walk and how to run and stuff like that, that's just non-declarative memory. So you don't need to consciously think about every single step you take, or you don't need to consciously think about every bite you take or breath you take. That's all non-declarative memory. And then you would have emotional responses, which is usually associated with the amygdala, or emotional memory, sorry. So amygdala Usually people think of it as fear, but a lot of emotions are associated with the amygdala. So non-declarative memory, just think of it as something that you don't really need to think too hard about. Like it's something that that is automatic, like when you're riding a bike. You don't need to think about every single uh, pedal you're taking. Or when you're walking, you don't need to think about every single step or eating. You don't need to think about everything you're doing. Whereas declarative memory, if you're trying to remember something that you studied a week ago, or you're trying to remember... Uh, what the name of that city you visited was, or where you wanted to go, or what the name of the hotel was, or what room number you stayed in. Those are all declarative memories. So we sometimes call non-declarative memory, we'll write it above it, um, implicit memory. Implicit memory because it kind of results from direct experience, whereas declarative memory is called explicit and that's because um, it results from more of a conscious effort you to remember something. So implicit is more uh, personal experience. So you know when you learn to play the piano, it ends up being this memory that's ingrained into you. You don't really forget non-declarative memories. That's another thing that non-declarative memories usually take a lot longer to form. So it probably took you a lot longer to learn how to ride a bike, or if you're a piano player, or a violin player, or 
um, you play some sort of sport, it probably took a while, but for the rest of your life, you're probably going to be pretty good at that sport. And even if you didn't play it, or if you, if you didn't play the piano for 10 years after you played it for 20 years, 10 years later, you would probably pick it up pretty quick. Whereas someone who's just starting playing piano when they were 30 would probably take quite a while to learn. Whereas declarative memory, you can uh, learn, you can remember stuff pretty quickly. So you can remember a fact pretty quickly, but you can also lose it pretty quickly. And sometimes it, it'll be lost forever. And sometimes it'll be somewhere deep inside your brain, your neocortex, and you'll be able to remember it at some point later on in life, but it can kind of take some reconsolidating for it to come back into light. So those are the two different types of memory. Uh, in further videos, we'll talk about how memory is actually stored in the brain and how the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex and all the neocortex uh, um, of the brain are kind of involved in this massive loop that are all interconnected and all the different theories that are associated with memory from neuroscientists past and present.